in the new book, The Real Anthony Fauci, Bill Gates, Big Pharma, and the Global War on Democracy and Public Health, Robert Kennedy Jr. crafts a harrowing narrative of the man behind public health policy for the last 40 years, coming into the spotlight once again during the COVID situation. The book details many of Anthony Fauci's crimes going all the way back to the early 1980s, from withholding legitimate and inexpensive AIDS treatments in exchange for more profitable and lethal alternatives, to horrendous experimentation on African civilians, it is difficult for good-natured souls to comprehend the depths of the depravity that this so-called hero possesses. One of the more shocking revelations comes in Chapter 7, entitled, Dr. Fauci, Mr. Hyde, NIAID's Barbaric and Illegal Experiments on Children. None of this information is new. In fact, it was detailed in several mainstream publications, including the Associated Press, and in a 2004 BBC documentary entitled Guinea Pig Kids, which was based on the fearless research of human rights activists Vera Sharav, along with journalists Liam Sheff and Celia Farber. New York's Child Welfare Agency, known as the Administration for Children's Services, or ACS, is notorious for its far-reaching legal authority to kidnap children from their parents with very little cause. They're essentially out of control. Uh, I've had many ACS caseworkers tell me, we're ACS, we can do whatever we want, and they usually get away with it. In 1992, Fauci's team, with the help of ACS, descended on Incarnation Children's Center in New York City, which housed orphans who were HIV positive. Fauci saw this as a gold mine of test subjects who were conscripted as lab rats for a new generation of experimental age drugs. The most vulnerable children in society were the ones that Fauci's team targeted. Vera Sharav, Holocaust survivor, human rights activist, and the founder of the Alliance for Human Research Protection, explains. You would not expect too many parents to volunteer their loved children for such experiments. This means that if the researchers want to do the experiment on children, they're going to look for vulnerable children whom they can get. And when you have city government agency accommodating them, that is the biggest betrayal of those children. They don't have anyone but the city agency that is their guardian on paper, but not in human ways. In 1983, the government mandated that independent advocates be given to children who were to be used in experiments that were thought to have more than minimal risk. This was widely neglected during Fauci's aid studies on orphans. According to the AHRP, only about 30% of the children experimented on in New York were given advocates. In many cases, it is unclear whether or not these children actually were HIV positive. At the time, HIV testing created a high number of false positives. The tests used in the 1990s were the ELISA screening test, the Western Blot Confirmatory Test, and the PCR Viral Load Test. And we all know how inaccurate PCR testing is. According to independent organizations, including the Vera Institute of Justice and the AHRP, it is said that 64% of these children were black and 30% Latino, which lends itself to the racial and eugenics-based nature of these experiments, which seems to be a trend with Tony Fauci that we will explore further in upcoming chapters. When children become wards of the state, they are required to be given proper medical interventions to treat any ailments that they may have. The justification for the experimentation on mostly minority, HIV-positive orphans was that it would allow these children access to the most cutting-edge treatments that they normally would not have access to. Dr. Mark Klein, a pediatric AIDS expert at Baylor College of Medicine, stated, quote, I understand the ethical dilemma surrounding the introduction of foster children into trials. To say as a group that foster children should be excluded from clinical trials would have meant excluding these children from the best available therapies at the time. The drugs that were administered included nevirapine and the highly toxic AZT, a repurposed cancer drug that had been previously discarded due to its severe and sometimes fatal toxicities. Experimental AIDS vaccines were also being tested on the children as well. 
During these experiments, many children became violently ill and ultimately refused the medication. Children who were receiving treatment on an outpatient basis would be removed from their parents if the parents decided to discontinue use of these experimental drugs. In the case of Jacqueline Horger, the callousness of the ACS was on full display. After seeing a decline in the health of her adopted HIV-positive children, who had been on the experimental drug protocol, Horger stopped giving her children the drugs. Immediately, the children's health improved. Shortly thereafter, ACS showed up and removed the children due to Horger's lack of compliance with the experimental treatment protocol. She was then convicted of child abuse and forbidden from ever having contact with the children again. Where are they now? I don't know. I'm not allowed to know. There are many first-hand accounts of children who decided that they wanted nothing to do with the experiment. Children who resisted were force-fed the drugs. Those children who continued to resist were taken to nearby Columbia Presbyterian Hospital and had a tube, known as a PEG tube, surgically inserted into their stomach in order to administer the medication against the child's will. Journalist Liam Sheff stated, In 2003, two children, ages 6 and 12, had debilitating strokes due to drug toxicities. The six-year-old went blind. They both died shortly after. Another 14-year-old died recently. An eight-year-old boy had two plastic surgeries to remove large, fatty, drug-induced lumps from his neck. This isn't science fiction. This is AIDS research. Between 1985 and 2005, 532 infants and children were experimented on while in foster care in New York City under the auspice of the NIAID and pharmaceutical corporations such as Merck, Bristol-Myers Squibb, Progenix, Genentech, Glaxo Welcome, which became GlaxoSmithKline in December 2000, and Pfizer. In January 2008, the NIH released an article in the Journal of Pediatrics that stated that the regulations that were in place pertaining to advocates did not go far enough to protect wards of the state and went so far as to propose some modifications. However, not much else has come in terms of policy reform, and no one has been held accountable for the actions that took place at ICC. In 2009, the Vera Institute issued the results of its investigation of two decades worth of child experimentation by NIAID. It was determined that 80 children died while enrolled in clinical trials while in foster care, and that 25 children died while in medication trials. Many other policy violations were noted as well including 21 children who participated after a recommendation was made to exclude them from the trials. It may be impossible to break through the cover-up to know how many children were truly affected by these drug trials. Liam Sheff claimed he was able to get authorities to admit to 200 deaths of children in foster care. However, he was unable to get them to admit that any were due to drug toxicity during experimentation. Journalist Celia Farber, one of the contributors of the film Guinea Pig Kids, recounted her experience investigating the deaths of children from Incarnation Children's Center. Quote, I found the mass graves at Gate of Heaven Cemetery in Hawthorne, New York. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a very large pit with astroturf thrown over it, which you could actually lift up. Under it, one could see dozens of plain wooden coffins, haphazardly stacked. There may have been a hundred of them. I learned there were more than one child's body in each. Well, it is shocking that uh, in New York City, uh, exper experimental drug treatments are being used on uh, children who are in foster care. We do know that several have passed away uh, during the course of these experiments, uh, and we know that there are still some involved. Um, and there's been somewhat of a secrecy about the whole matter, I must say. It has not been easy to uh, get through the bureaucracy as to exactly uh, what this is all about. According to LifeSite News, up to 14,000 children were used in these experiments nationwide. The testing at ICC, the most publicly known of these types of experiments on children, is simply a glimpse into the overall scope of these experiments. It is said that some four dozen experiments in at least seven states were all taking place at the same time with funding from Fauci's NIAID and its big pharmaceutical cohorts. 
the recent public outcry involving inhumane animal experimentation, and these revelations about the diabolical treatment of orphans has shed new light on the crimes of Anthony Fauci. The more awareness around these issues the public has, the more likely justice will be 